Vue has outdone itself again. There is a new Define model macro that was just released with Vue 3.3. It's an alpha right now, but I wanna show you all about it and how it might change the way you work with a Vue in the future. Now this macro is experimental, so it might be something you wanna wait for to use in production, but let's take a look at how it works. We're also gonna take a look at Vue Macros, which is a really cool library that has a bunch of experimental macros so we can test it today. By the way, I've been going live lately and talking about Vue, answering questions, doing live coding on AWS Amplify, Vue 3, React. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link to my email list. If you sign up for that, I'll give you free notifications, free cheat sheets, and it'll be in the description and in the comments. So there was this tweet that came out recently by Kevin that continuously improving DEX for Vue 3.3 with this defined model. And Evan said it's in 3.3 alpha 9. Now, if you like to play with it today, I think the easiest way to do that is go to the Vue SFC playground choose the version at the top, choose 3.3 alpha 9, make sure dev mode is turned on, otherwise it won't work, and you can try it today. So you can see here, define model is in here. I wanna show you another way of, of testing this out today, especially if you're not on 3.3 alpha 9, which is to use a plugin library called Vue Macros. And you can see with Vue Macros, a lot of the reactivity transform stuff that is no longer happening, by the way, if you're new to Vue and you heard about reactivity transform, it was an experimental feature, they're not using it, but now they those features are actually in this Vue Macros library. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to use define models, which is pretty much exactly like what define model without the S's is going to be in Vue 3.3 alpha 9 as an experimental macro. And what's nice, it works with Vue 3, Nux 3, Vue 2, and the Volar plugin. Okay, so I have a new Vue 3 app up and running here. I went and cleared out a few things, so it just says hello world. Let's install some things that we need. So this is all in the directions. And these will all be developer dependencies that we'll install into our new Vue 3 app here. Another configuration we need to do in the Vite config file, we'll need to install, uh, use the Vue macros. So we'll go ahead and import that in. Inside of the plugins here, I'll add Vue macros and this macros, and we'll do .vite for right now. And inside here, we'll have plugins. And then first we'll add view. And then we'll have a couple of more places we need to change things. Uh, first, we'll need to go to the TS config file since we're using TypeScript. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this from another screen. This basically allows uh, Volar. So it'll make it so these macros all work correctly. Then I'll go into the env.d.ts file. And I'll just add a couple of other references. So I'll add this Vite Macros Global and this Unplug in View Macros Macros Global. Sometimes you have to reload the whole window after doing this, so I'll go ahead and reload it. And we'll check real quickly to see if it's there. So if you do Divine Models, it looks like it's installed correctly. So let's show an example of how this might work. So V Model is a way you can add it onto inputs to do two-way data binding. And if you add it to components, you can have props that are passed in that are also bound to the parent component. So if any changes in the parent component it also affects the child and vice versa. So what we can do, uh, let's show, let's see how this would work normally in a kind of in a normal app here. So I'm going to create a ref here from view and I'm gonna create state and I'm ref. I'm just gonna put the base example with account here. And we have this hello world here and we can put in state.count. And if we save this and refresh it, cool. So we see zero here. And if we add in, I don't know, a button, we can do a click handler and we can just do uh, state.count plus plus. And if we do that, it seems to work as we expect it. Now let's create a new child component. And let's say we wanted to have a child component we pass this ref into, this, this state into. So I'm gonna create a new file. Uh, we're gonna call it my child dot view. We're going to, uh, I'm gonna use my TS setup here. This is just a script that I showed, um, an extension that I have, a snippet. And I always like to move this at the top. And we'll do a hello from child here. And let's see if we can make sure we import it in here. Let's put it at the bottom. Put my child, cool. So you see hello from child, so we know that's working. So let's go back to my child. And let's let's create some props in here. So if you remember correctly, there's some built-in def uh, macros that are already built into view. And one of them is define props. So once again, since it's a macro, we don't have to import it in. And here, since we're using TypeScript, we're gonna add some types here. So we're gonna have, it's gonna pass in a model value, number, 
I think that's what we want right now. And let's go back to app view for a second. You can see right now it's saying we're missing the Maya child. But if we go v model, and then we passed in this state.count, by convention, that'll equal model value in our child component. And we can also have this emit, and we use define emits. And once again, we can add in some types here. And this is, once again, by convention, model value. And then we'll have value, which will be a number, and it'll return void. So now we have our, our, our props and emit, and then we can do like a on click function. And we'll do new value equals props dot model value plus one. Remember, you can't change props directly from a child component. If you do, because they're read only, you'll get an error. So now we can emit it back up. Update model value, and then we, we pass in the new value. We can show the value of the model value, and we'll add in a button here. So now if we go back to app view, okay, we'll refresh the page. And you can see here now it's updating as we ex expect. So this is how you use vModel with a component. And it was quite a bit of work, and you kind of have to know the inner workings of how vModel works with this model value and then being able to manipulate it. One thing we can do is with this define model, it's a little bit simpler. So let's let's take a look at this. If Let's create a new file, and I'm gonna call this mychild2.view for lack of a better naming there. And then I'll do vbase3, and let's open up mychild real quickly, and let's copy and paste what we have here over. Okay, so but instead of using define props, let's use define model. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of this define emits because we're not going to do an emit anymore. And I'm going to change this to define models. And now what we can do here is we can actually grab out model value, uh, destructure it. And then instead of doing this new value here, we're just going to do model value dot value plus plus. And this will increment it. And so if we did this correctly, we'll come back over here and we'll change this to my child two and we'll change this to my child two. Okay, and we'll refresh it. And you can see it works exactly as it did before, but now we're able to use this much easier syntax to be able to, to imp increment and have two-way data binding. So now we have this defined models here at the top. Uh, we passed in this model value, or we uh, destructured the model value out of it. And now we can actually change the model value directly inside the child component without any errors that you might have otherwise. Because you, typically you can't change props um, when they're passed in directly. It's a really nice feature. I could definitely see switching over to this syntax. Uh, and going forward as a great experimental syntax. Like I said, if you're wanting to try this out today, I would try the SFC Playground and trying it on dev mode to give it a shot. So thanks.